Well, thank you, Greg. Uh, I'm very, very, very pleased to be here to, import, to kick off this important conversation about the future of transit in this great city and this great region. Many of you know that transit plays a really big role in keeping our region moving and our economy growing. We deliver 100 million rides in a year. We're 24th in population, but ranked ninth in per capita transit ridership. As Congressman Blumenauer says, we outbox our weight class. But even with that, I think we can all see what's happening on our roads and highways. The recession hid our mobility problems, but now they're back with a vengeance. We're also seeing dramatic growth in demographic shifts and even more dramatic technological changes. So I really appreciate the City Club Forum as a great place to see how we harness these trends going forward. But let me pause here for a moment and touch on what a difference three and a half years makes. The last time I was here was February 2012, and I laid out a relatively bleak picture for TriMet. Unemployment was high, and the recession had taken a toll on our operating resources. But the greatest threat facing TriMet was whether we were going to be controlled by our legacy health care costs. or make the changes so we could deliver on our, message, on our mission to provide the region's transit service. Fast forward three years and the picture is very different. TriMet today is a much stronger and much better agency than it was the last time I was here. We negotiated a labor agreement while fair to employees has resulted in changes to our benefits that's put us on a long-term sustainable financial footing. We adopted a long-range strategic financial plan that guides us as we make real progress on our legacy pension and health care responsibilities while expanding service. We're the first transit district of its kind to receive a triple A bond rating from Moody's. Again, another first. We've added back all the service hours we cut from the recession. We'll soon launch a new bus line between Tualatin and Sherwood to connect the growing jobs in the area. And we've worked with businesses and the community to develop a 20-year vision for the future of transit. We call these our service enhancement plans, which map out improvements in every neighborhood of the region. And this last Wednesday, with the backdrop of a growing economy and a close working relationship with our business community, our board of directors approved new revenues that will allow us to expand bus service and provide more connections to jobs, education, and community services. So yes, we are growing again. But I want to shift here to pause for a moment and point out a significant shift in our region. While we have a long history of hearing from businesses with so-called white-collar jobs, those eight to five jobs that are typically located near good transit service, We've long, and we've all long seen real estate brokers advertise nearby transit service to entice buyers. But here's what's changing. Now we're hearing from manufacturers who've located their businesses based on available land, but now realize they need transit service to get their employees to their jobs. So we're working, for example, with the Hillsborough Chamber to connect those workers who are employed in those expanding manufacturing jobs in North Hillsboro using innovative shuttle services. We've already 
have two of these innovative shuttle services operating in important places, Forest Grove and Tualatin, but we want to do much more. The head of Central Cultural of Washington County, Maria Caballero Rubio, testified in front of our board this week in favor of expanding transit. She said they work with people who can't afford a car, car insurance, gas, maybe can't even get a license. So they rely on public transit for everything, to get to work, to get groceries, and take the child to the clinic. We know that these same needs exist in neighborhoods around our district, neighborhoods such as Culley, Rockwood, and mid, mid Multnomah County. We're focused on improving services in these areas and to connect them to nearby job centers. That's a key part of our future. But you may have also noticed uh, what happened a week ago. The fantastic new orange line, and it's one of a kind, no auto, telecom crossing, opened up on time and under budget. We saw 40,000 people ride the Orange Line on opening day and a truncated service day at that. Tens of thousands crossed the beautiful Tillicum Crossing and explored the communities along the Orange Line. It's more transit and improved transit at a time that we need it most. Now I say all of this not to crow, although maybe just a little, but to make the point that three years ago, the challenges facing transit looked very daunting. But with partnerships, collaboration, innovation, and persistence, along with a growing economy, we are in a very positive situation today to look ahead. But it's clear that the region's transportation future is filled with challenges that are also very daunting. Consider, we're expecting the equivalent of four new Hillsboroughs. That's 400,000 residents and 260,000 jobs over the next 20 years. Congestion is growing. Freight is being impacted. Experts predict that without new investments in transit and roads, congestion will triple over the next 25 years. But there's a solution. The 2014 Portland Business Alliance study found that investing in transit and roads would reduce that impact by almost half, while generating nearly $1.1 billion in economic benefits and more than 8,300 jobs per year by 2040. That's a return of $2.40 for every dollar invested. And transit's a very important part of that. Our region has tied its future to transit. Look at the city's many apartment developments or retail uh, and, and commercial developments underway. We're hardwired now to create livable communities along good transit. But while we're talking transit here, we cannot forget that we're tied to a multimodal transportation system. You know, we have a roadmap for the future in this region, but also many, many challenges ahead for both transportation, transit and transportation in general in the region. The federal government is, well, the federal government. They recently passed the 37th temporary extension to the Federal Transportation Act because they can't agree on how to move forward. And despite the yeoman work of folks like Carbon 4 from our governor's office, the state hasn't been able to craft a package that can gain the supermajority needed to pass tax measures, although they came tantalizingly close this year. Our regional transportation plan is woefully underfunded for all modes of travel, whether it's roads, transit, bikes, or pedestrians. Meanwhile, 
for the first time in 40 years, the region has no major federally funded rail project ready to move forward to construction. Now, despite all this, personally, I'm optimistic. Just as TriMet overcame its most pressing challenges, I think the region can as well. And the recipe is the same. Partnerships, collaboration, innovation, and persistence. We need to be persistent in working at the state and federal level to support the passage of new funding for all the elements of the transportation system. Again, that's roads, transit, freight, bike, and pedestrian facilities. But you should consider also that other communities are not waiting for state and federal funding. Look at Seattle, Denver, Phoenix, just to name a few. They're stepping up and investing billions in their transit and transportation systems. Our transportation challenges can't wait, and we need local attention now. Recognize also that our region has greater needs and, frankly, needs more attention than most all other areas of the state. Uh, we, while we look forward to working with our federal and state partners, we also need to look for our own funding solutions right here in this region. We also need to pursue innovation in the transportation realm, including creating our first bus rapid transit system along the Powell Division Corridor in, in East Portland. We need to continue our leadership using information technology to better inform travel choices and make optimal use of the infrastructure we have. It means tying together transit service with new transportation systems such as Lyft, Uber, and bike share. These could play an important role in making that last mile connection for transit riders. I now want to paint a little picture for you. Travel along the Orange Line today and you'll see major investment in business expansion, which translates to more jobs. You'll see new and improved roads, sidewalks, and bike facilities, helping create vibrant neighborhoods. Take that vision and think about how it can transform another transportation corridor. The Southwest Corridor from downtown Portland along Southwest Barber Boulevard and I-5 to Tigard and Tualatin is ready for more significant investment in transit and roads. The real problem in this corridor is traffic. It's backed up, often at a standstill, often for hours a day. We're coming together as a region with solutions to invest in both roads and transit. To keep this corridor moving. Now, if all of this sounds daunting, it is. But we've done it before, actually many times before. And we've done it using the same model of a partnership, collaboration, innovation, and persistence. After all, 40,000 people experienced our sixth max, sixth max line last Saturday because of that model of coming together. We've used that approach for the last 40 years and it has made us one of the most enviable places to live in the country. Again, the result is 100 million rides a year, ninth in the country in per capita ridership, and that's why U.S. Transportation Secretary Fox calls us a model for the nation. What makes this region different is that we work together collaboratively, we work together to get to yes, and we know that it's not one travel option versus another, that we need them all. So let me leave you with three final thoughts. First, we have a long history of making this a great community, and we'll continue that with all of your help and support. Second, while we continue to pursue state and federal funding, our region also needs to step up and make the investments to keep us moving and our economy growing. And finally, think big and then think bigger. Thank you very much.